Okay, it's not. Never mind. Have you already got the switch signal on? You got this signal on? Yay! All right, we're up. We're going. It is February the 28th, uh, 2021. This is Flynn United Methodist Church. We're going to start with 413. 413. We ask you to stand, and the song is A Charge to Keep. Charge to keep, I have a charge to keep, I have a God to glorify, a never ending soul to save and fit it for the sky to serve the present age. today is feel the power of God. Feel the power of God. Here we go. Come heaven and earth, feel the power of God. Come people of God, feel the power of God. Come great and small, feel the power of God. So our next one is 469. Jesus is all the world to me, 469. So here we go. Jesus is all the world to me, my life, my joy, my all. He is my strength from day to day, without him I would fall. When I am sad, to him I go, no other one can cheer me so. When I am sad, birthdays coming up this week. Why don't we sing to these? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you. Happy birthday to you. All right, 
right, so I have no other, uh, no anniversaries on my list. Anyone celebrating anniversary this coming week? I guess everybody did it on Valentine's Day or some other time. Okay, that's all good. We uh, want to, just by way of announcement, remind everybody about the lilies, Easter lilies. There's there's forms there on the back table, and we uh, we uh, give you an opportunity to purchase a lily to in honor or memory of someone, and then we'll have those in the church on uh, on Easter Sunday. And that is a that winds up being a fundraiser for the women at the Normandy Church for the work that they do. Um, certainly want to continue praying for all of those that uh, still are putting things back together after all the the pipes and things broke. I know we have some pipes here we're going to work on and. Pipes at the Normandy Church that we're going to work on. So just, and, and as folks go through that, of course, if you know anyone that needs help, we, we can uh, try to help. If you want to reach out to us, we'll be glad to, to try to do that. So we want to keep Bob, uh, uh, Robert Dietz in our prayer. Uh, that is uh, Tara's uh, brother-in-law. Keeping uh, Jan and Tanya in our prayers. We also want to keep uh, Bob and Leith in our prayers. Uh, and then their, their step-grandson, Seth, He's in the hospital, but uh, he uh, has less cancer now than he did when he started, so that's good. Also, uh, Letha has a cousin, uh, Sheriff, <coughs> who's being treated uh, in uh, San Antonio for cancer. Um, who am I forgetting? Your dad? My dad. Yeah, St. John. St. John. Yeah. Okay. Polly and Jacob. Polly and Jacob Benia. Okay. And I have a very nice thank you note from them. Oh, sweet. Which is in my truck. So okay. I'll bring okay. it and sit on the table. Weren't they here last week? No, I thought I saw them somewhere. Okay. He still can't get out. Okay. Okay. Well, then, then I had a I had a, a vision last week. I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Anything else? Do you want to announce the covenant groups? Yes, we are. We are doing covenant groups with both churches. We're we're having one here at nine o'clock, just right at the beginning of Sunday school, and then there there are other groups meeting on uh, Sunday afternoon, Monday evening at seven, uh, Tuesday morning at seven thirty, and then Thursday at eleven. So if one of those times works better. I've got schedules in the box. Can be happy to help you out with those. The the ones on uh, Sunday, Monday, and Thursday um, are also available online. If you want to uh, log in through the internet, you can participate that way, save you a trip, and perhaps save you from uh, COVID and other stuff. You never know. Um, what else am I forgetting? No, you're good. <laughs> the uh, eggs for the Easter egg hunt. Yes, thank you. Candy. Yes, we have we we uh, we're collecting eggs for the Easter egg hunt that they're going to have at the park in Normandy on Saturday, the Saturday before Easter. We're looking for plastic eggs. We're also looking for candy that won't melt. So all the candy that melts will come to Pastor Mark, and everything else will go in the eggs. And that that's that's a joke, but just in case. Um and. Uh, yeah, so if you can get that, see that at the store, pick up some of that, that'll help us have plenty of eggs. They go through several thousand every Easter, and uh, they are going to have that this year. Thank you. Thank you, man. What else did I forget? Yes, sir. Okay, well, if you think of it, let me know. Anytime, we can, we can hear that, okay? All right, let's see. Let's, let's bow for prayer. Lord God, we come to you, and it's such a blessing it is to be able to come to you. What a blessing it is that we can have a relationship with you, that we can invite Jesus to live in our heart. Help us, Lord God, to just bask in the, uh, in the peace that you give and the glory that you share. And help us, God, to sense the work that you want us to do, that calling that you have for each one of us. Give us a clear idea of what that's about. And then give us, Lord God, everything that we might need so that we can do the things you want us to do. And we pray this in our Savior's name, Jesus Christ. And we join now in the prayer Jesus taught the disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
These are holy hands. He's given us holy hands. He works through these hands, and so these hands are holy. These are holy hands. He's given us holy hands. These are holy lips, he's given us holy lips, he speaks through these lips, and so these lips are holy. These are holy lips, he's given us holy speaks through these lips, and so these lips are holy. This is holy ground, we're standing on holy ground, for the Lord is present, and where This is holy ground, we're standing on holy ground, for the Lord is present and where he is is holy. Let's pray now our prayer of illumination. Lord. Open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. So our reading today is from Exodus chapter 3. We're going to read verses 1 through 15. Moses was keeping the flocks of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of the Midian. He led his flocks beyond the wilderness and came to came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush, the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great side and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see God, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, here I am. Then he said, come no closer, remove your sandals from your feet, for the, the place in which you're standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their suffering. And I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. 
When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, they will ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus says the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this and this may my title for all generations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let's stand now and join in our affirmation of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. So our next one is 715. 715. And this one is Rejoice, the Lord is King. 715. I rejoice, the Lord is King. You Lord and King of Lord. Mortals give thanks and sing and triumph. Let's bow for prayer. 
May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So we are uh, we're back. We're in the second Sunday in the season of Lent for for our on our church calendar, and for for Lent this year, we're going to focus on wilderness. And we're specifically looking at the, the wilderness story of the uh, Israelites when Moses, uh, with God's help, to help deliver the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. Now, it's been a while since I've seen one, but I can remember back, I don't know, a while back, there were those cell phone commercials where the, the, the actors in the cell phone commercials, and there was one in particular, but there were others, they would hold up the phone and then just say, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? And then it'd just be all over the place. I watched one on YouTube this week, and it was like, you know, he's in the in the city, in the country, walking through a swampy, and they're just, can you hear me now the whole time? And 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 I don't know that we're doing that as much as we used to, but I can remember used to, that would be how it would go, especially if you were running, you know, even around here, I guess sometimes you won't find places where it's a little spotty, where, where you, you, you're not sure you're getting through and I know, I know sometimes we experience that with God. Sometimes, sometimes we're not sure if we're getting through with God or if God's getting through with us, so we're not quite sure where that, that connection is. It, it's unfortunate, I guess, that, that most of us haven't had this, this burning bush experience where it was just beyond obvious that we were entering the presence of God. You know, one, one time I saw what I think the burning bush must have looked like. I was driving home, and it was a pretty bad thunderstorm, and I was, I was basically coming up to crest a hill. And just as I'm about to crest the hill, a bolt of lightning comes down, and, you know, I felt like it was next to the car, but, you know, it was probably a quarter mile ahead of me on the other side of that hill. And when I came over the hill and started back down, just, just about, I don't know, 50 feet from the fence in a pasture, there was a bush completely engulfed in flame. You know, and, and I had the thoughts, I bet the lightning hit that bush, and that bush just burst into flame when the lightning hit it. And I said, I wonder, you know, I wondered in myself, I said, could that be what the, the... Of course, I was going 60 miles an hour, and I'm sure the bush just burned up, you know, and it was about <laughs> to rain because of the lightning. And, but I wondered if just that glimpse I had at 60 miles an hour of that big bush, you know, burning from that lightning was maybe... Maybe what, maybe a little bit of what Moses experienced. Now we 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 started with with Moses uh, last week, as we were talking about slavery. We were talking about how Pharaoh was concerned that the that the population explosion of the children of Israel to the point that he was he was ordering the midwives to to put to death the boy babies. Now the midwives didn't do that. And uh, but 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 that was the position that Moses was in. If Moses had been discovered, he would have been killed by Pharaoh's people. And if you remember from last week, we talked about how Moses' mom put him in a basket, put him in put him in the river, and then Pharaoh's daughter found him, and then basically adopted him. He brought him in, named him Moses. And uh, we we talked about. You know, we talk about this is God preparing Moses as a little baby. So that when Moses grows up, who knows, some 40, 50 years later, he is going to return and be instrumental in getting the, 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 the children of Israel released from slavery and, and, and headed towards the promised land. We talked about how God knows us, how God, how God loves us. We... Uh, and so Moses then grows up. He, uh, he as he's growing up, he's he observes just the harsh treatment, and and he actually he kills one of the Egyptian taskmasters because he was being so cruel. And and Moses thought nobody knew about it. He thought he covered it all up. You know, this would have been a great maybe first episode of a CSI episode. Maybe who knows? And and Moses then the very next day he comes across two slaves that are. And he just can't believe, with all of the things going against him, that they would fight one another. And when he comes across them, and he, he, said, he says, why are you doing this? And their answer is, is in, uh, we, we read it in, in Exodus 2, and verse, uh, 
Verse 14, he says, they, they tell Moses, they say, well, who made you ruler over us? Do you mean to kill us the same way you killed that Egyptian? So what Moses thought was a secret wasn't a secret, and he's afraid, and so he leaves and goes to Midian. And, and as he's coming into Midian, there's a well, and there's uh, shepherds there, and there's a group of women who are also shepherds, and the women are being harassed by the shepherds who are there. And so Moses defends the women, helps the women draw water, and then when the women get home, they get home a lot faster than they usually do. Their dad says, what? Why are you back so soon? And the, and the women, the, the, the daughters tell, tell their father, they says, well, there was an Egyptian there, and he, he helped protect us from the shepherds and helped us draw the water. And the father says, well, where is this guy? Why didn't you bring him home? And so I guess they go back and get him, and they bring him home, and, and we don't know how much time passes, but it isn't long. And Moses marries one, one, of those, uh, one of those daughters. Um, Zephorah is her name. They get, they get married. Well, the, the king that was in Egypt when Moses was a boy and grew up is no longer there. There's a new king. And, and the, the Israelites are continuing to suffer. They're continuing to groan. They're continuing to cry out to God because of the oppression that they are facing. And, and we read there in Exodus 2.24, God heard their groaning. God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There's that word, uh, word covenant again. You know, when, when we get to a place where we're crying out to God, where we are truly oppressed, God hears. Now, I'm not going to say God hears as quickly as we want God to, but God hears, God knows, and God will eventually come and give us relief. You know, I think that's one of the reasons why, as you, as you read through Scripture, if you've ever read through the, the Bible, one of the things that has amazed me in Scripture is the number of times in the Scriptures that the Scriptures tell everybody to take care of widows and orphans. You know, and, and, and I, I think the first, second time I read through the Bible, I'm like, well, why in the world, why in the world do the, the, the widows and orphans get all of this? Why, why are they there? I mean, they're not the ones writing the Bible verses. I mean, they're going to be the ones that are just barely able to make ends meet. Subsistence living for most of them. And, and I imagine it is, is they tell us how widows and orphans face their, their lives Back in the Bible times, most of them weren't even quite up to subsistence living. How is it they're in the Bible so many times? I've come to the conclusion that of all the people crying out to God, widows and orphans perhaps cry out to God the most. Or certainly, maybe not the most, but a lot. And so as they cry out to God, God then in the Holy Scriptures tells all of us that here's some special people I want you to look after. I don't know that you can ever go far wrong if in your daily life you, you set aside some time for widows and orphans. Here's a question I have for all of us. What are we crying out to God? Are we crying out to God right now? Are we so burdened with an issue or with something that's going on that we find ourselves crying out to God? You know, and, and, and what tends to happen, I know it happens to me, maybe it happens to all of us, you know, if things are running pretty smooth, I'm not, I'm not crying out to God. I'm not even thinking about it. It's not till you know, things go really bad. And, and I think there, there's a good thing there for us to think about. It's like, well, well, if right now we're so blessed that we don't have to cry out to God about anything, maybe we could cry out to God for someone else. Maybe we could cry out to God for people who, who are lost right now. There are so many people trying to live their lives without God. And I'm amazed at how many people are proud of it. But they're, but they're living a life without hope. Some of them know it, some of them don't. 
And oh, that we would be as burdened as God is over people who don't know God. When, when Moses gets to the bush, he sees the bush, and God calls to him, Moses says, well, here I am. Maybe that's a song we should have sung today. Here I am, Lord. Here I am. Are we saying that to God? I mean, we know that God has special work for us to do. As we read the scriptures, there's plenty in there that God wants us to do. Are we answering God, here, here I am. Use me. I know a lot of times we're like Moses. You know, when God finally tells Moses what he wants, Moses tells God, you got the wrong guy. You know, I can't talk, I can't do this, I can't do that. And, and we, we lose track that, that, that that's not really how God works. What God, the way God works is God, God uses us as we are. And, and the less equipped we are to accomplish the task God gives us, the more credit that God gets. Because typically when we accomplish something, we kind of, oh, I, look what I did. But what God loves to do more than anything else is God loves to put us in a position where there's no way we can do it. And then when it happens, about the only answer we can give is God did it. Because this is far beyond anything that I could do or accomplish. Because you see, God wants to deliver us from what enslaves us. You know, sin enslaves us. Sometimes addictions enslave us. Sometimes our our, 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 we have relationships that have gone wrong that didn't save us. Sometimes our, our job is a little bit out of whack. But what we know is Jesus Christ is the hope of the world. Christ came. Christ lived. Christ was crucified. Then he arose three days later. And all of that was for us so that we can have a relationship with God. Made right with God. And all we have to do is ask. Ask God to forgive us. Ask God to come. And take up residence in our heart. And our mission as a church, the, the, the main thing we are here to do is to make disciples, to help other people get to the place where they're able to, to, to recognize and see and then, and then ask God to come and live in their life. That's why we're here. That's what we're about. I love, I love the saying there about holy ground, how Moses is on Holy ground. Come no closer. Remove your sandals. The place where you are standing is holy ground. You know, I don't know in our time that, 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 that there is, is much to actually a place of holy ground. But, but where, where we know God wants holiness is in our lives, in our hearts. God wants our bodies to be a temple of the Holy Spirit. And that's where what's holy is, is our bodies and our souls. Our mind, soul, body, and strength. All of that is what God wants us to use to love Him. You know, like I mentioned before, how, how, how God equips those He calls. He doesn't always call the people that are best equipped because, because God uses... In fact, I'm going to read from 1 Corinthians, the first chapter of 1 Corinthians not many are wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were noble. God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world. Things that are not to reduce to nothing the things that are so that no one would boast. You see, we, we believe this lie that the more we get, the better things are for us. The more I can get, the better it is. That, that is a lie. Because, because the way God works, the more we give, the better we are. The more we give, the better we are. I, I, there's an article, it's, it's, just, it's older, it's from two, 2014, and it was a study of uh, MS patients and they, uh, they, they separated the patients into two groups and they thought, okay, we're going to get folks and train folks to encourage these multiple sclerosis patients in their, in their illness and we're going to help them out. 
And so they trained a group of uh, just people that were willing to help, and they trained them. And then there was a second group they trained that were people who actually had MS to help, to help the second group. So the first group had just, just, just folks that didn't have MS, and then the second group had folks that did have MS. And so the, the study was to figure out which of the groups would fare better, the ones that had the, the encouragers who didn't have MS versus the ones who had the encouragers that did have MS. And the, and the amazing result of this study is of those two groups, the group that was helped the most was neither of those two groups. The group that was helped the most were the folks who had MS who were helping and helping the others cope with MS. That was the group that was helped the most. And, and in, the, in this piece... It says these people had undergone a transformation that gave them a fresh view on who they were. Caring for others brought healing. Our nervous systems are wired to find satisfaction by seeking the best for other people. You know, God calls us to get our attention. I can remember a story of someone who completely changed careers, a teacher. As a teacher, a student made a comment to her, and in that comment, she heard God wanting her to make a change, and she did. I, I, know, uh, I know the reason I play guitar is because when I was in seventh grade, I went to a retreat, and there was a high school student who was playing guitar at that retreat. And I just felt inspired that that might be something I could do if I could ever figure that out. And, and uh, that, that, that's something that I love to do, glad I'm able to do. You know, when we encounter God, when we encounter God in any way, it eventually becomes obvious, obvious that it's God. You know, we have a tendency not to listen you know, but, but what I hope we will come to do and try to do is, is find those near to us who are crying out to God for whatever reason and help them any way that we can. Last week, I challenged us all to, to find out what it is God wants us to do. I encouraged us all to take advantage of the covenant groups that we've started. Today, I want to encourage us to align our burden with God's burden. To align our burden with God's burden. And, 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 and where, I, where I get God's burden is from Luke 15. Luke 15 is the, is the chapter in the Gospels that talk about things that are lost being found. And, and, and the chapter talks about law, a lost sheep out of a hundred sheep. But, but, the, but the verse is not really about sheep, it's about people. And it's about people who are lost to God being found. And and after, after we read the account of the sheep being found, we read this. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who do not need repentance. And then there's the passage about the coin. There, there's, there's 10 coins. One is lost. They, they, <laughs> they, they search the house. They find the coin. And then we read this. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. And then the last uh, account there is the parable of the lost son. The parable is most often called the parable of the prodigal sons. I, I think both of those sons are, are a little bit out. And so the father tells his oldest son, You are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice. Because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life, was lost, and has now been found. I'm reminded of a clause that we have in our covenant that says that weekly I will have a faith conversation with someone I do not know. And that would be a challenge for all of us to take on as we try to align our burdens with God's burdens. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for all that you do for us. And we pray, Lord God, that you would lead us and guide us in everything we do. 
We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So we collect our offering in the back. There's an offering plate there. Uh, Here it is. I got lost. Sorry. If you would mail an offering to us, it's Post Office Box 14, Flynn, Texas, 77855. I invite you to stand. We're going to sing together our docs holiday. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here. Something about that name. Jesus, that's Jesus. shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you and give you the gift of his peace. We ask this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. God be with you till we meet again. By his counsel, guide of Thanks for being here. Did you think of what you wanted to say back there? <laughs> All right. Well, there's always next week. We'd be glad to hear it. Y'all have a good week.